Greetings and salutations to all you folks out there. Got something a little bit different for you today. This is a two versus two versus two, and I bet you can't guess how the teams are oriented. The map is Dark Heart, and this is one that I've casted, I think, one time before, and basically it is a three-way of sorts. Um, there are three equal expansions and three equal islands with a triangle in the center, home to several mass extractors. This is a 10 by 10 map, I believe, which is plenty of space to spread out and expand, but not so much space that you have room to hide. It tends to be a very, very active map, so we should get... Be but yeah, but yeah, but yeah, that's all folks. We should see a good bit of action on here and not have any boring moments. Now, just to zip around the map a little bit and see what we're looking at, we've got a couple of naval wrecks over here. That looks like a Cybran destroyer and a frigate. So a T1 and a T2, a lot of mass. And then the same things up here with a civilian structure in the middle. So Mass distribution is equal. We also have T2 Rex right here. So tons and tons of initial mass. You're going to want to overbuild power like a madman and catch up later on your mass income. Hopefully be able to make use of it without overflowing. Let's introduce the players before we get any further along. And then we'll get into these builds where we're already starting to see things happening. We have Roke as Seraphim and Yenon as Aeon on the left side strip. Then we've got Hot Fog taking UEF and Seraphim for Achieved Jaguar. I wonder if Jaguar is, I don't know, that, that, that is an interesting username. And then on the right hand side we have Blast Chilled taking Cybern and another Cybern for fiendish artwork. The names in this one are epic. I love that. I'm going to have fun saying that one. Alright, so fiendish artwork and Blast Chilled both taking Cybern. I guess that's just going to be the Cybern team over there. As far as early stuff goes, we've got an engineer headed out for some reclaim for Achieved Jaguar and ACU moving to the left. So the bottom team is spreading to both sides for the expansion. Looks like we got engineer going to rear, but no plans for the expansion for the right hand team. But there is a move order queued for looks like the ACU immediately after that land factory and then engineer for roke headed up that way as well heavy naval build going down for roke he is going to want to own the water and then yenon with his commander just kind of hanging out on the beach so looks like this is going to be an uncontested expansion and this for the southern team setting up to be good for the south it is good to be from the south side so yeah yeah that's right it's indian over there in that neighborhood um We've got a Zooey moving across. This is one of the most aggressive T1 artilleries I have ever seen in my life. He is booking it for the other side. Blast Chilled has his own artillery sitting here as if to say, Hey, I knew you were sending that unit. How dare you? I'm going to obliterate you. And he does have radar with it. So if that thing travels in a straight line, I do believe the Medusa will win that contest. We'll kind of keep one eyeball on it as it gets over there. There is a uh, paused air factor. I wonder if that's going to be a bomber. There's the Medusa shot between the inaccuracy and a slight change of course there around the rock. That Zooey did dodge it, and there goes the shot. So, Zooey wins. <laughs> Blast chilled. I knew it. I knew it. I knew it. T1 bomber coming out. That is going to be very useful for harassing these outside edges, and I spy a Jester. The Cybern is going to take very early air control. There's the bomb spread, leaving that Zooey with 20 health, but I don't think it's going to get a chance to do anything else much because here comes Mr. Jester. And zap, there goes Zooey. So, air control on this map can be pretty brutal because you can snipe off all of these expansioneers that are heading around. Now, this one has already done its damage. Um... It is sucking up all of the mass on this side. Roke going after mass like a madman. Just like any good player should. We got a bomber coming in over Jaguar's base. And that is going to pull a nice little hover maneuver. And drop on nothing. A mass extractor for some reason. I would have thought the pair of engineers would be a better target. But apparently not. We're just going to bomb out that mass extractor. And be totally useless. Each his own I guess. On the left side, Hot Fog, as before mentioned, just taking uncontested control of that expansion. And that engineer was on a key all the way over to the reclaim. The ACU is walking across right there. Very, very late to be moving out. 
but he is going to get the job done and hopefully snag that expansion. Jester was able to snipe off the engineer up here, and he is moving into the back. Maybe he'll be able to do a little bit of damage to the naval production. Got to get those engineers offline before they get that extra naval factory up. Put a little wrench in the works, slow things down, etc. And there we go. Jesters are surprisingly hardy for T1 units. Like... 525 health for a T1 air unit is massive. That is one of the beefiest T1 units you will find. It's kind of odd that it belongs to Cybern, but it is a unique unit, and it is so ludicrously expensive that it does justify its high HP, but it's kind of one of those things that breaks the general feel of the faction, because Cybern's all about cheap and speedy units that are used in unique ways. It is a unique unit, and it can be used in strange ways, but it is definitely not cheap. That little Zooey getting the job done, he's gonna snipe off that mass extractor on that side. I don't, I, that may have actually been a T2. I don't know if it was T1 or T2. It died before I got a glimpse of the little marker under it. But one way or the other, he did kill a mass extractor, and he's gonna start firing on that one. So a little bit of damage to be done. Just gonna wipe it out very, very quickly. And here comes a T1 bomber laying down some damage on those power generators. Fortunately, there is a frigate in the way. And the Cybern anti-air is going to take over, doing an awesome amount of damage. I'm gonna drop that thing out of the sky before it can do any more harm. On the left side, Yenon pulling up some T1 Navy. There is the beauty of the shard. That ship is amazing at anti-air. Um, I know I've mentioned this before, but that is, I think, the single fastest T1 naval unit. It is actually fast enough that it can run underneath a T1 bomber for a very long ways. And it basically packs the same punch as a stationary anti-air turret. So that thing is absolutely monstrous versus air. Um, even in, in clumps, it can actually defend against torpedo bombers very, very well. So there is that as well. I, it kind of makes up for the Aeon frigates not having anti-air, but not really because you also have to build them in addition to the frigates. So I, I think it kind of was intended to be the type of thing where you have the Coopers and the Bulwarks, the UEF Navy, where you have the, um, the HP and the damage split up into two different units or the battle cruiser in the bulwark. Um, so you have two different sides of the same coin in two different units, and you gotta build both of them at the same time, but Aeon just got the short end of the stick on that one because the frigate sucks. So, yeah, there is that. We can all be depressed for Aeon because of course, they don't need another tool to win games. It's not like they have the strongest end game plays. Cough, cough. Achieve Jaguar is hiding in the water. He does have a T2 naval factory, which is something I suppose. He's going to start building a T2 destroyer. He is number three on the scoreboard, pulling in 37 mass per tick, which is actually the biggest eco here. So nothing to be ashamed of there. Let's go ahead and uh, take a trip down the scoreboard here. We got almost 7,000 reclaim for Roke, pulling in 35 per tick. Hot Fog pulling in 23 per tick, but that is on a power stall, so he's more a more accurate number looks like 31 to 35, somewhere around in there. 6,700 reclaimed. Achieve Jaguar on 37 with 5,600 reclaimed. Fiendish Artwork on 31. Everybody's kind of in a tight pack here. And he has pulled in 4,800. Yenon with 3,000 reclaimed. Sitting on 29 income and blast chilled at 31 with 2,700 reclaimed. And notice how, for the most part, the amount of reclaim that they got is directly proportional to how high they are on the scoreboard. That is not coincidental, I guarantee you. A little bit of an engagement here. We've got multiple frigates colliding. That's going to be a couple of Seraphim frigates and several Aeon frigates. That is going to be too much for the Cybern side of the Navy, but there is a Jester there to kind of throw things off balance ever so slightly. Thankfully, there's a couple of Interceptors and the frigate Anti-Air to make up the difference. It looks like they are going to drop an additional frigate. Maybe not. 165 health and he is headed away. There is a T1 sub there, but it's going to leave it alive with 15 health. That is going to soak exactly one shot at some point later in the game. On the south side, we've got more frigates from Blast Chilled. Those are going to be headed around the south side, attempting to kill off all of this build power. There is a Cooper up, which is going to kill off that T1 sub. If the frigates were to focus fire on the Cooper, the Cooper would have absolutely no chance. But as it is, the impressively high DPS on the Cooper is going to make short work of that frigate. Maybe 
I don't know. We're gonna have to see which one of those wins. I, I am genuinely curious. Well, that is a vetted frigate. Two vets. That's actually quite nice. Eight kills on that sucker. And here come the hover tanks, so definitely gonna be a loss for the frigate. Will he take the Cooper with him? I think not. All right. Enough of a southern naval engagement. Let's check back up here on the north. Things are looking pretty stationary, actually. On the center island, there has been a land invasion of the mid. To this point, Yenin has been control in control of that spot with his land factory and a couple of units. And Roke had picked up all of the mass extractors, but we're finally going to see all of that go down. I'm trying to decide. I have not played on this map enough to decide whether or not full-scale warfare in the middle is cost-effective. Basically, whatever faction reaches T2 first is going to wipe this out. All of this is well within reach of any of the faction's T2 navy, and it's just so exposed, I don't know that I would ever, at any point, upgrade mass extractors out there. I mean, capping the T1s obviously is going to give you a return, but it's, it's just so exposed. Exposed. All right. Yenin, fielding a pretty dang good group of interceptors. There is a lot of air over here from multiple parties engaging. Just kind of looping about in the sky, swarming around because who micros interceptors anyway? And we're just going to determine the winner by basically who has more and who had the better turn coming into the fight. Looks like Team 2 is going to run away with that easily. And there's now a T2 gunship harassing these mass points. There's a couple of... Well, one, mobile anti-air, that T2 gunship is on such low health, that thing would actually be able to take it out pretty well. But it looks like he's just going to kind of hang out to the side. There's the shots gunship coming in range, although it did vet. We're just going to have to see how well he does on that. Probably going to drop that mass extractor and not much more. On the midpoint, frigates firing away at those mantis, but the damage is done. Looks like the right side team is going to take over the entirety of the midpoint. And what they do with it is their business. I like the mobile flag. That was a very nice touch. Anytime you have a map this size, T2 Air is going to be playing a very important part. Uh, I imagine T3 Air will show up eventually if the game goes on long enough. But, yeah, I think this is mostly going to be T2 Air. So the mobile shields and mobile flak is going to make a huge, huge, huge difference. Because flak under shields slaughters huge numbers of T2 gunships before it goes down, and um, even T2 bombers are heavily affected by flak. Flak is a multi-purpose tool of great use. Um, it does incredible amounts of damage to T2. It basically wipes clean the earth with... That was a bad phrasing of an attempted metaphor. It wipes the earth clean of T1 with barely any effort. Like, one shot, and you're just dropping clouds of interceptors and then even on strap bombers if you have enough flak you can drop strap bombers pretty easily brink you need to untie your tongue and straighten your brain out because sometimes you try to say things and they just do not come out like you planned that is uh it's very interesting there the inability of those units to actually shoot anything ah there we go change the angle a little bit and boom that was adjusted somewhat in the patch, I believe. I think they couldn't hit it at all before. Um, now it's just kind of spotty with that hitbox, but hopefully that can be corrected. T2 gunships are trying to make a comeback in the middle there, but lots of interceptors going to drop those things down and then get consumed by the swarm that is Yenin's interceptor force. On the south side, looks like the Cyber Navy is up to no good, or the Cyber ACU rather. He has a torpedo upgrade. Well, big surprise there, like that's never happened before. We've got a Salem moving in on the north side that is going to start harassing the Eco. Hopefully he can drop a couple of T2 mass extractors, destroyers moving into range, and that Salem is going to have to run for the hills. But they are taking a fair bit of damage from that ACU. I don't think... Nope, no T2 Navy units actually died. That looks like a frigate, but I'm not sure if that was already there. So, Cyber ACU is actually a brutal tool. It looks like we're keying up for a snipe here. We've got five Nothas. Sadly, those are not very good for sniping because the area of effect is not big enough to uh, do that well versus ACUs dodging around. But they do deliver a serious punch on the first impact. So, if you're not paying attention and a, and a 
few Nothas come in, uh, six, seven, eight, it can strip most of the health of, off of your ACU before you can do anything about it. Fiendish artwork, just kind of chilling out on this island. I've always thought it was really strange on this map how the expansions are actually more protected from navy than the central uh, central land masses are. Not that you're really protected from navy, because if I'm not totally mistaken, the Salem can reach the middle from the very, very edge of the water, not to mention being able to walk up. But it's just kind of interesting that the expansions are actually larger than the primary residences. Trying a little bit of an incursion there. We've got serious damage done to the build power, but nothing really other than that. So not a loss for the North team whatsoever, or the right team, I should say. Right, left, and bottom. Three-sided maps are strange when you're trying to describe them. All right, Seraphim Destroyer moving in to firing range. If he dodges around, uses that micro, it will actually do far better. You can see, once you get up in range, a T2 Destroyer demolishes a Salem as long as it's microing in tiny little circles and avoiding all the fire that it can. But uh, if that Salem is just a little bit outside or if the Seraphim Destroyer is not micro to dodge shots, obviously the Seraphim Destroyer is going to lose horrifically. Destroyer is being focus fired here. 90 health and there's the kill shot. Frick is going to stay in business long enough to drop that thing. One less destroyer in the Navy. Slightly less damage potential is always a good thing. Well, the Navy on this side is looking a little bit hard pressed and we had some T2 bombers, T2 torpedo bombers rather, that were moving in to harass the Navy on this side. So, it looks like a gang up. We've got more Navy down here and there is a cruiser that's going to start eating away at everything on these islands as long as it doesn't collide with the hills or giant boulders strangely sticking up however you wish to describe those ACU moving into play again that Cybern ACU with a couple of veterancy on it right now it's really not upgraded at all but if you have he does have does he it looks like he has stealth I think he has stealth we can probably assume that he does um, yes if you have stealth and you have the torpedo upgrade, it makes for a very lethal combination because units actually have to have line of sight on you to hit you with a torpedo. And then if you have a couple of veterancy or possibly the T2 suite to get that extra little bit of regen in there, you can easily go T to two, T to toe to toe with two T2 destroyers. And Nothas, ah, they are on the T2 naval factory which is going to prevent building temporarily and then destroy that factory, eliminating Cyber and T2 tech from the playing field. This is turning into a nasty one-two punch because we've got artillery streaming in from the left side. Unfortunately, the Cerberus turret is just not able to hit anything. It's on kind of a plateau there, and the lip of that Mesa is getting in the way of firing. The ACU is intercepting, doing a fairly nice job of keeping them from coming in too far to the inland but uh, yeah still taking some damage on different things that you really don't want to take too much damage to. Noth is eliminating 100% of the naval build power except for this newly constructed factory which I'm sure they're going to turn on momentarily. We've got torpedo bombers out harassing these naval units and it looks like there's going to be enough of a Navy build up here where if that destroyer moves out so it's not wasting half its DPS on the rock face It's gonna be an easy naval win for the south team looking at the map as a whole This is looking very good for the south side very good indeed They've edged out this expansion somewhat. We do have a t2 factory right there that is pushing Wagner strangely strangely enough that whopping murderous 3 DPS, ouch, it hurts so bad. Yeah, right. A single Wagner loses to a single T1 sub, which is just sad. If you lose to a unit with 600 health when you have, what, 13, 1400 health? Yeah, that's just sad. Roke is on an upgrade that would apparently be resource allocation we may be seeing a t3 t3 
3 air move in the very, very near future. He does have a T3, two, three T3 mass extractors. Holy kishmolies. He has scaled up his eco something fierce. He is almost double. He is double. The second best player, 112 income, 258. And nope, Jaguar has 91. So 112 and 91 are the two top numbers at the moment. This is getting a little bit interesting here. Got to see how these guys are going to match up. Looks like we have doubled up Navy colliding on the north. Fiendish Artwork also has the torpedo upgrade on his commander. So he is going to be laying in a ton of damage to the North Navy as well. Salem coming in to back him up. And he should be able to wipe out those units nicely. Ah, that would be a tack launcher brilliantly done there are a couple attack defense there that's going to reduce the impact but there's a couple hitting anytime you're damaging those hqs that burns build power and that burns mass is between cycling the units the engineers will begin to repair the factory so uh, it's not as good as it could be the fact that there's two now going to be three tack defense up there is going to pretty much negate that entire effect, but it was a cool little attempt while it lasted. Looks like we got several TMD going up here as well to prevent those TAC missiles from hitting anything important on the base. And that is what now? That is a cruiser missile, a single solitary cruiser missile. I don't think I've ever seen a cruiser launch only one. That is very, very strange to see. Another TAC missile on this side. Looks like construction started on a second one. Maybe that was going for a snipe. I'm not totally sure, but it looks like they've quit in favor of attack missile defense. Maybe they will be able to kill something of value. We'll find out. Looks like T1 artillery has shifted to the south side. Cruiser is going to start eating through this expansion for fiendish artwork. And now that the numbers have settled, let's take a look at Achieve Jaguar. Is it reclaim? No, that is real income. 82 looks like the steady number, unless he is just reclaiming at such a consistent rate that the number is stuck. Blast shield, obviously, reclaiming to that number. Rope pulled in 12,500. Looks like 11, 15 for blast shield. Nicely done. Seven and seven and three. Yenin has been doing absolutely no reclaim whatsoever. It's on the same number it was at the very beginning, and look at all this delicious mass. He has destroyers sitting in the water that haven't been reclaimed. Shame on you, good sir. You should definitely be resolving that issue because there is a potential win lying in the water. I am impressed with Blast Chilled and Fiendish Artworks ACU work. We've got ACU defending on the ground. We've got ACU defending in the water, which is a uniquely Cybern trait. Just using all of their abilities to try and control the map as best they can. And that cruiser, the destroyer needs to be back closer to the cruiser so that um, the attack missile fire does not reach it. But it looks like the ah second cruiser. There we go. Doing a nice job of picking that up. You can afford a couple extra cruisers in your naval mix when you have a 200 DPS commander torpedo weapon. There's three destroyers versus two destroyers and a stealth. But man, when you get that focus fire up on those Seraphim destroyers, that gets to be a lot of DPS in a big, big hurry. Exodus class dominating the water over here. That alpha shot is brutal but easily dodged. Thankfully, it appears that Hot Fog has not figured out that he needs to micro his navy. He is on the move now, but he took a lot of shots before he decided to move. Bulwark going up in flames. That's going to be the protection that Hot Fog so desperately needed, and it looks like he's going to suicide a destroyer point blank. Well, he did take a destroyer with him, so I suppose it's not a total loss. T2 Torpedo Bombers moving out. Those were on, were those on the ACU or the Destroyer? I did not see. I think they were on the ACU, judging by the looping pattern. Yes, down to 5,300 health. Thank goodness for cruiser coverage. 
Those two cruisers saved his life because a couple more passes and that ACU would have been dead. This is unfair. I can't do anything, says Roke. He's been giving units. I do remember when I saved this replay, whoever sent it to me, Roke sent it to me, said that his keyboard had stopped responding or some such thing. Okay, that comment makes a lot more sense. So basically he's building using one-click commands to keep everything flowing and then handing units off to Yenin to actually micro. So interesting compensation for technical difficulties there. TG Torpedo Bombers moving out. They are going to go for death. That is what they're going for. Blast Chill's ACU is still in the water over there. But unless there's a ton of torpedo bombers in a single pass, thanks to those those uh, cruisers, actually only one cruiser because that one got shot down, um, that ACU will go up. Now there's four destroyers in the water. Jaguar's eco is starting to make the difference up between him and Blast Shield. Blast Shield's on 50 income, Achieve Jaguar is on 85 income, and look at all the build power on this navy back here. I do realize that there's that much right here, but with less eco to feed it, Obviously, you're going to get units slower. So, I think Blast Chilled may be in for a bit of trouble in just a moment. Interceptors coming in, trying to knock those T2 gunships out of the air. Destroyers moving down south, trying to escape the damage that they were taking. And it looks like, again, the combined forces of Roke and Yenin are going to easily be able to take out the opponent's air. So much air power. Why are we not seeing... I know I saw some torpedo bombers up here, but why are we not seeing a huge amount of air from this team? It seems very odd that they would be so in control of air and then not use air effectively. I mean, you can wing... You could do drops around the outside. Granted, there are T1 artillery there, but when you have a Seraphim on your team, you can drop floaty arty in the back here wreck the naval build power there's so many options that you could take with air drops bombers harassment around the outside edges and it's just kind of sitting dormant there's our first asf we got t3 air online looks like roke is going for his second nope that is uh t3 he already has his second resource allocation upgrade hence the 7.6 thousand energy income. Achieve Jaguar is by far the lowest on this list with 672. And he's stalling. I was about to say, but he's probably surviving on overflow. Nope. He is stalling like a mofo. And that is with 300 overflow from his teammates. So definitely needs to get his own power generators online in a big, big hurry. He's only got two engineers on it right now. Honestly, I would stop all production on everything else and strictly go for some power buildup and there's the death t2 destroyers if the t2 destroyers hadn't gotten it the torpedo bombers would have so as predicted the overwhelming eco and build power of a chief jaguar even taking into account the fact that he's power stalling he was able to outproduce the cyber player over here blast chilled and when you don't have a, a group of units to back you up, when you don't have those extra naval units, your torp comm is just too exposed in the water. As we saw with TA in the last cast. <laughs> torp commander's good, but if you use it as a crutch for too long, it just, it, it just, you die. That's all there is to it, you die. A lesson that I think fiendish artwork could take to heart because he is still wandering around in the trench between the land masses. There's a lot of torpedo bombers left. And they could at any moment turn on him. Well, I say that. They're dropping like flies to these interceptors. Lots of interceptors in the back. Could have saved those. Teams need to be communicating and using their assets effectively. But those are just going to sit there and let things die. Engineers dropping, that's gonna be a nice tasty little chunk of reclaim for Achieved Jaguar, who does have a TG power generator online now, but needs to build another one, and he is. He needs to build it quicker. When he bites into all that reclaim, he's gonna power stall even harder as the extra mass comes in. There's a strap bomber that was built by Roke and is now under the control of Yenin, and he is building another one. 
So hopefully he will be able to snipe someone and make a difference in this because as soon as this guy is defeated, these guys are going to come for this island in full force. And at this exact second, it looks like the south side has a far superior force between the amount of gunships that are there, the amount of T2 Navy from both sides, and a semi-respectable air force. I think the south could wipe the floor with the left-hand side except for those strap bombers that t3 air is a wild card it just depends on how well everyone reacts to everything asf moving in there is an overwhelming force of interceptors not to mention the asf and it looks like the tort bombers are shooting straight for the navy looping around taking for granted that there's a distraction there but the asf are going to spot it drop most of those off Tort Bombers looping around, and in the end, they're not going to get too terribly much done. And it looks like we're continuing to see just enough Navy placed over here to not let these units through. There have been so many Cybern units that have died in that pass. I see maybe five or six, maybe five Seraphim units right there, and the rest of it is Cybern. So there have been a lot of Naval units lost on that little passage there. Whoever can get engineers in, which I was about to say it looks like Roke will, but no. Oh, chicken. I see the little gray dot. Well, that is going to change things considerably. I would recommend that Hot Fog look into microing a little bit better. I always hate to be overly critical in a cast that is not of a technical nature, but it is kind of painful to watch a disorganized UEF naval player when you have units moving up not in the proper order shields not quite in the proper places and micro to stay out of danger when they're down that kind of thing UEF navy has the potential to be so awesome at all tiers but you just have to take the time to micro it correctly you can't just grab a bunch of units and just kind of ram it in the direction that you want to go it doesn't work that way Chicken taking some T2 gunship fire. Looks like he is going to keep his head above water on the entire crossing. That means that potentially if a GC were to do that, he could actually use his eyeball beam all the way across versus Navy. To be kind of hysterical, T2 going up. The point defense is not going to be enough, though. You thought the wiping out that entire cluster of engineers in one shot going to vet very very quickly if these guys keep feeding a build power there's a battleship over here but a single battleship i don't think can damage a yathotha enough to decrease health with the veterancy accounted for now there's some destroyer fire coming in as well and with no micro in between the shots taking all three shots point blank that is actually adding up to some impressive damage on that thing if one of these ACUs were able to come out of the water and land an overcharge on that guy, he would be out of here. But it looks like he's going to start eating his way into another base. 11,000 health pushing up on a veteran. C5 kills to vet. Are we going to get it? Focus fire on the T1 engineers. There it is. Another bit of health. Got the shield down. He's going to be able to chew through the rest of this. There is another veteran. C. He's going to be able to finish this entire base off and possibly survive it that is awesome that's why you control k your build power when you see a chicken coming you need to get those t1 engineers out of the way so you don't vet that sucker up and he's going to start eating away at that battleship battleship needs to run for the hills otherwise he is going to go down in flames the chief jaguar down to the original two mass income he does have a couple of t2 mass extractors but when you got no power you got no mass either and so he is on two and twenty the original 1 in 20 would be the proper response to that. Miscounting my origination numbers. So sad. Direct fire beam weapons simply cannot overcome a simple cl cliff face. That is rejection to the max. Call the rejection hotline because your damage is denied. Seraphim Navy and Cybern engaging once again on the north side. 
We're seeing a lot of Seraphim Rex this time. This is a much larger engagement than we've seen in the past, and there's actually some hoplites laying some damage down up here. That is really cool to see. I don't think I have ever seen hoplites interacting with T2 Navy before, but that's what you get in Subcom. Always something new happening. Actually, they should do fairly well for themselves considering how front-loaded they are. That massive amount of damage coming in. Another chicken online. Where is the first one? There it is. Still alive, 18,000 health, wandering the map. So it may just come down to these two chickens. And it's so sad when one can't fire. Just kind of wandering around in the water with his guns underneath. And there we go. Now he'll be able to fight back. I'm sure he is headed for this ticking time bomb of a T3 power generator over here. Stravom are coming in, wide miss on that cruiser thanks to a little bit of a move. He's going to head that way. Chicken needs to face the Navy. Otherwise, he is just going to take all that unnecessary damage with nothing to show for it. So many cruisers coming in. 100% cruiser cru 100 cruiser production because of the T3 air. Yeah. That's right. I need to invent my own new language. This is what you get, folks, for not getting enough sleep. Everybody says that you need sleep for a healthy brain, and I am here to verify that claim because if you do not get enough sleep, your brain gets the hiccups, as you can readily see. I like the T3 sub. I really do. I dislike the fact that it is all by itself within range of other T2 torpedo sources because T2, T2 torpedoes trump T3 torpedoes in almost 100% cases. I am really looking forward to next week because I am going to get a full night's sleep tonight. I am so looking forward to that. I'm going to rest over the weekend and then next week is a new week. Lots of cool things happening and I can just leave everything as is in the past. This week has been an odd one. I can, I can say that for a surety. There's another half-finished Yathotha there, but I think that is going to go down thanks to the T3. This is, this is bad. If that T3 power generator goes down, ACU is going to start taking a massive amount of... Why? Move! Move! Don't die to Cybern Cruiser fire! Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so the Cybern Navy is going to run for no apparent reason. Fiendish artwork is down. The Yathotha came in for the kill that's why the navy was pulled back man that was right down to the wire i didn't realize that second yathotha had pushed up out of the water from this side and come up on that acu ah wow well that's uh that that is that is a race to the finish for sure if that Navy could have stayed in place for about 10 more seconds, focus fired on that ACU, Roke would have been out of the game. But there we go. Two T4s at one time. Got to keep track of where both of them are. And if you need to get in the water, you got to get in the water to protect that commander. Strap bomber kind of looping around on the south side. I think we can confidently say that the left side is going to win this. Barring abject stupidity or unforeseen circumstances. Since there's no Cybern player, we can't fall back on a Telemazer to solve this problem. So we're down to conventional units, of which the South team does not have enough, thanks to that first run of the Yathotha. And he is back in town for another visit. Troll the around, wiping out all the engineers again with the whole kill your build power thing to prevent it from vetting, but five vet doesn't make any difference anymore. It can kill what it wants. It will never gain another HP. T1 bombers flying all over the map. Going to be knocking out those T2 hover units, but mm, varying degrees of success involved there. If we can kill them all off before they do too much damage to the build power, point defense is going to help. And we're just going to kind of watch and see how this thing will eventually wrap up. Got a strap bomber over there. Stilio. More strap bombers coming up in the back. Honestly, you could ground fire this on top of the ACU's head. And the big ball of death would actually do enough damage on enough of an area of effect to kill the ACU in a couple of shots. 
But we're not going to see that. We're going to see ACUs fleeing to both sides. Looks like we're going to have to fall back on torpedo bombers or some other conventional solution rather than ground firing something in a creative way. And T1 bombers desecrating the decks of that T1 frigate. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up. There is practically nothing left. Tiny little pieces of eco, couple of factories here and there, ACUs in the water. What are we going to get the kill with? Come on, guys. Ah. Upgrade. Looks like T2. Your thoughts is going to try to follow him, but I don't think waiting will make any difference. Actually, if he circled on top of the ACU, I think those do... Um, damage to the ground where they walk. That should be a massive unit. I don't have my tooltip turned on. Um, yeah, I think the Athotha does damage where it walks. So, I could probably kill the ACU just by trampling him to death. Alright. Just about there. <laughs> Wishing for the Telesnipe. But there is no power, so no teleport's going to happen. Alrighty, guys. I'm going to go ahead and say my farewells, because we've got the torpedo bombers coming down here, and we all know how this is going to end. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. This is kind of a crazy game, one of those unique ones, but there is another unique map I want you guys to play on called Crazy Rush. Remember that we're doing that for the live cast on Saturday. Um, get those replays to me by Friday so that I can select a good one to do for the live cast on Saturday. We'll play on Crazy Rush and then we'll vote on a new map to pick up for the next week. So stay tuned for that. 6 p.m. Eastern U.S. time as always. And until then, I will see you guys later.